past seven days, Bitcoin rose more than 8%, while Ether rose 10% after Shanghai. What, what do you think this rally is about? We're in this sweet spot right now, but we're not gonna stay there for very long. And so a lot of people are wondering, what are going to be the next catalyst? First of all, with Bitcoin, it's going to be halving next year. And do you think perhaps investors are more bullish on Ethereum given the use cases versus Bitcoin? The price of Bitcoin is above $30,000 for the first time since last June. And with the upcoming Bitcoin halving in 2024, many are wondering if it has the potential to boost the price of Bitcoin. In today's video, Raul Pal has shared his viewpoint on how Bitcoin halving will impact the cryptocurrency and where Bitcoin is headed in the future. He's also shared his advice for the investors, so be sure to stay tuned until the end of this video. And of course, subscribe to my channel for more of the latest updates on the economy, crypto, and the market. Let's get into it. This whole Bitcoin halving narrative, I've spent a long time looking at it, and I think it's factually incorrect. Interesting. It is, it is actually the business cycle, which is quite extraordinary, and it's uh, re best represented by M2. So global M2, year on year, is the same as Bitcoin year on year, basically, mm. except Bitcoin overshoots on the upside, mm -hmm. so it comes off the actually off the scale because... It's an exponential adoption asset. It's got Metcalfe's law to it. Mm -hmm. So what you find is in the bull markets, it outperforms where M2 should be. In the bear markets, it exactly follows it. Mm -hmm. And so then I thought, huh, what's going on here? And I, I just wrote a thesis on this because I just suddenly figured it out. I got on my Bloomberg a chart of the ISM survey. And I'm like, I've been looking at this for 30 years. I'm like, it looks really cyclical now. I mean, like, like clockwork cyclical. So on Bloomberg, you've got this cycles finder. So I put it on and every top is exactly three and a half years. Hmm. Like, and all the bottoms match. Every top is every time Bitcoin tops. Mm -hmm. I'm like, and then I started doing the work and I realized what I think has happened is the global business cycle is just a refi cycle because everybody in the world reset their rates at zero in 2009. Mm -hmm. And at most debt is between three and five years. So you get this three and a half year cycle, right. which is a refi cycle. So right now, the problem is, is if we got rates of bloody 5%, there's not enough money to cover it. So the economy slows down, etc. So it feels that Bitcoin, all the crypto market is liquidity flow plus adoption. Mm -hmm. And once I discovered that, it just so happens that Bitcoin was launched at exactly the same time as zero rates. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. coincidental that the Bitcoin halving, because, uh, you know, I, I looked at this for a long time and, you know, talked to Plan B about this. And I'm like, direction, it, it seems fine. I don't have a problem with it and it doesn't have to be perfect. But it's like, but where's the demand side of that equation? Because it's only a supply story. And every yeah. time I look at people in commodity markets who just use supply, which is a lot of people, they always fuck it up because mm -hmm. demand is actually the more important equation. The upcoming Bitcoin halving in 2024 has the potential to boost the price of Bitcoin. The halving affects the balance between supply and demand in the Bitcoin market. If the demand for Bitcoin remains constant or increases while the supply decreases, the price tends to go up. This is what happened in the past four cycles of Bitcoin's history. In 2012, after the first halving, Bitcoin's price went up from $12 to $1,000 in just a year. The second halving in 2016 was followed by a price increase from $650 to $20,000 over the next two years. But in 2020, after the third halving, Bitcoin's price didn't change much right away. Each cycle consists of a period of rising prices leading up to the halving, followed by a more explosive rally after the halving, and then a significant correction of 75-85% to before the next cycle begins. According to Raoul Powell, if you look at the long-term chart of Bitcoin's price, you'll see that we're currently in the middle of another cycle that resembles the previous ones. I notice, you know, when you step back, and I keep trying to get people to think this, it's a long-term ad adoption curve, and we only just started. We're at 300 million people, and we will get to 3 billion people over time. So you need to think of things as a long-duration asset, and you just size it accordingly. Now, depending how much risk you want to take, and, and that's it. But people get so obsessed. I mean, yes, I look at hourly charts next to me on my Bloomberg of ETH and everything else. I don't trade at all. 
Mm -hmm. I'll never buy it, never sell it. Occasionally, I'll make a switch. So if that ETH sold, if the Sol ETH chart really breaks and I got some conviction, I'll switch some of my ETH into Sol. That's all I. That's all I ever do. Right. Um, I don't even trade it, even though I've got hourly charts and I'm watching it right. like a crack addict for no reason. <laughs> I just think of. I think what we'll see because of adoption curves and how they always play out is a decreasing rate of change. Yeah. And what you'll end up doing is naturally switching into another asset if you're driven by performance. There's a whole bunch of Bitcoin maxis who aren't. They're driven by um, idealism, and that's fine. But for me, it's about, you know, why did I make the switch from Bitcoin into ETH? It was just that the ETH adoption curve for such a large asset was so much faster. So yeah. I think what will happen is these curves come down over time. Um, and so I don't know what that terminal value is. And what is this? I don't think of some golden state of heaven where we suddenly come and the, you know, the birds are chirping and we've reached this state. Right. You know, basically speaking, we'll all be OK if it goes up from here. You know, another couple of cycles with this 3x versus the previous high. Everyone will be just fine. You don't need to be the richest person in the world. Um, you can still be surfing in Hawaii or scuba diving in the Cayman Islands and not have to focus on all of it. So that's kind of how I think about it. But everybody always wants a target. In the back of my mind, when I first started this, I wrote the first ever macro strategy piece on Bitcoin. And I just compared an above ground supply of gold and known reserves and mm -hmm. just backed into Bitcoin and said, roughly speaking, with gold at, I think it was about 1300 bucks at the time, I said, equivalence basis, Bitcoin's worth a million dollars. And I've always stuck with that as that's probably the kind of you know, yeah. right kind of target. The cryptocurrency market has witnessed a notable shift following the successful implementation of the Shanghai upgrade on the Ethereum network. But Raul Pal still views Bitcoin as a long duration asset that will appreciate in value over time as more and more people join the network and use it for various purposes. He doesn't trade Bitcoin or buy or sell it based on short term price movements or market sentiments. He simply holds it and occasionally switches between other cryptocurrencies that he finds interesting or promising. Raul Pal is holding on to his coins until they reach the moon. He also highlighted that Bitcoin's adoption curve will be faster than gold's because of its digital nature and its network effects. This means that Bitcoin will reach its saturation point sooner than gold did, which took thousands of years. He estimates that Bitcoin will reach its peak adoption in about 10 years, which is roughly the time it took for the internet to reach its peak adoption. He believes Bitcoin's future value will be around $1 million per coin. But before jumping ahead, don't forget to like and share this video. The other thing I, I learned was having been in Bitcoin since 2013 is ridden the cycle up and down. So taken the, the joys and the pain. Yeah. And then rode it all the way back up in 2017 got out too early into the mayhem when it was at 2000. I was up 10x and I thought I was a god. Then yeah. it went up another 10x, then right. it collapsed. And then I bought it back, I thought brilliantly in, in April 2020. But I'd sold out at 2000. I bought back at 6,500. I'm like, fucking yeah. moron. Why don't you just keep it yeah. and buy more in the low? And I would have done a lot better. I, I went and did the whole maths and how much better I would have done, even though I traded it really well, theoretically. I'd have done 5x better just by holding it. And mm -hmm. if I'd doubled my position, my original stake at the low, I would have been something like 15 or 20 times more than I made. I'm like, okay. So that's I've used that framework. It's like, okay, fine. Just find whatever liquidity you can when it does this. Yeah. And you tend to get the higher expected future returns. I, See, so I, I discovered this exact same thesis that you had. It was after the European crisis and 2008. Um, so 2008, European crisis, 2012, there was a whole European economies that their stock markets were down between 75 and 90 percent. So you need, need to make one choice is, is this entire stock market going to go to zero? Because over time, and people, you know, anybody, the troll on Twitter will look, well, it can go down 50 percent again. You, know, you just size it accordingly, right? Yeah. But, um, but the expected future return is astronomical. And I just called it the bombed out market strategy. And it works brilliantly well in crypto because it's so cyclical.
What will the Bitcoin price be in three months from now? Does the next Bitcoin halving in 2024 have the potential to boost the price of Bitcoin? Can Bitcoin reach $1 million per coin soon? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more updates and insights on the economy, crypto, and the market. And of course, be sure to hit that bell icon to never miss any video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Adios.